Hey everyone, this is Baylor, and in this video we're going to take a quick look at comparing use state with React hooks to use reducer. So I've built the same application twice, both ways, and we're going to just kind of run through it so you can see how the the implementation might change and why, in my opinion, using the use reducer is just better from the get-go. Uh, it depending on what you're doing, obviously, but it's worth definitely worth worth practicing with a little bit because uh, with TypeScript you get a lot of benefit by using that. So if we take a look at this code base, uh, it's a really simple application where uh, we have a list of products. Uh, it's basically inventory management. And so we have a list of products with the the quantity that we have uh, on, on hand, and we can kind of see how many we have on order. And as we make changes to this, we can see how this amount that we're adding is going to improve our current uh, state of the world, so to speak. And then when we save changes, you can see it resets, so everything is happy and good again. So when we did this with use state, we have two, when you call use state, as you know, with React hooks, you get a tuple back, and it, the first item in that tuple is this, the value of the state, uh, and which in this case is going to initialize with saved. Uh, from the CNOME, and we have a setter, and the setter is a function that just takes a single argument and is going to update that state. And and so we do that once with this this save state enum, and we do another one with an array of items that um, have the saved quantity amount and dirty. And these the saved quantity and this dirty are what make it possible to have this this go back to 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 not having a highlighted background and also resetting the saved button uh, so that we have a, a kind of a, a modern UI. And so what we're doing here is we've defined our states for our save button and also for our, our items. And what we want to do is when we load this application or this component, uh, what we're doing is we're saying if we have no items, we've never loaded items before, then we're going to update the items to come from load items, which is a utility function that just returns back 20 items that match this item class or interface. And we are modifying them in place to have the diff amount, which I, uh, this one, uh, the impl implementations are different because I, I was tinkering with both. Uh, this first one is the diff between the quantity on hand and the quantity on order. Uh, this other implementation, you'll see it's the diff between this quantity before and after the save. Uh, so this one is saying that I'm, I'm subtracting the quantity on hand versus the quantity on order. And then we are telling or setting the, the initial saved quantity and, and also the dirty flag. And so we use this saved quantity. So when we change a um, one of these rows, then our our we're using this saved quantity to determine our, whether or not we're we've changed the record. Um, and so the way this works is we render out our table, we render out that sh that on change function, and we pass that in to this item row. And this item row down here, this is actually what has this input. And when we change the input, then we trigger an on change by taking the value of the input and the ID of the record we're looking at. So this, these two pieces of information get sent all the way back up to our app. Our app reads that ID and quantity. It iterates over the items that we have from our use state here, and then we check to see if we're on the current item, and if we are, then we use the quantity from here. Otherwise, we use our regular quantity. And and really, we can change that uh, looking at this now uh, because we know quantity is not going to change if we're not on the current item. Uh, and so we're only wor we don't have to worry about that breaking anything. And so now you can see that when we on change, we take our items, we map over them, we set the new quantity and the new diff, and and then what we do is we update the item to have the new quantity, the new diff, and the dirty flag set. And then 
we take these items, our new items, and we check to see if any of them or if some of these items are dirty. And if they are, then we set our save state to dirty. And so that's this part right here, where when we change this input, you can see that we're having to, we're actually getting this state here in this button. And then we can see we have our second function here. And this is something that's where when we save, we have two things that are happening. One, we update the save state to saving. We call our Ajax API, and, and then we update our items. Um, and we, we kind of mock out the save action by resetting the saved quantity and turning or disabling our dirty flag and changing our save state back to saved. And so all of these things combined create this UI that kind of mirrors an application you might build. So things to note by using the React, the use state here is that we, we have these two pieces of information separated. And that means that every time we want to, basically every time we interact with this, we have to modify them both together in pairs. So this is a common characteristic of this application. And, and I've gone ahead and I've written out these helper functions so that we don't have to have any of this logic um, down deep into this item row. Like the item row, when you look at it, when you call on change, it's just saying I take in the ID and I and I pass up a value. And then if we look at the save button, likewise, it actually doesn't even know anything. It's just a simple on-click event. And and that's just wrapping this whole this whole function here because we pass that in directly. And so if we take a look at the implementation when we switch to the use reducer, we have a lot more code, but by I think in this case, by adding this extra code, it gives us some stability as far as maintainability. There's a lot of abilities there, um, and I think it gives you uh, great power. So if we take a look, I we have several new interfaces. We have our um, our state of our of our. Uh, let's take a look and actually see what this looks like inside of our app first. So our app, now instead of having two bits of information where we have our save state and our items, we have simply our state. And our state initializes with the default value of an empty array of items and our save state is saved. So that is the equivalent of these two lines here. But you'll notice that we pass in a reducer here. And so the way that a the reducer pattern works is that instead of calling our like set items directly like we do here, instead we we call this dispatch function and we say I'm dispatching an event or an action, and this action type is in this case load items, and the payload for this action is the loaded items. And the thing to note that I think is nice about this pattern is when we loaded items here, this load items mirrors what you might get in API. And this loaded items, it does not include our diff, our saved quantity, or our dirty flag. And the reason for that is because when we have our API, our API doesn't care about that data. That data is exclusive to this component that's rendering out these changes and trying to help the user make a decision. And so what the difference that, I, that you'll notice here is that when we call set, set items directly, we have this data being known by the component. Whereas in this case, this component doesn't know anything about what we're going to do with those items. And I like that. I like that our, our component itself doesn't understand how to manipulate the data, if that makes sense. Um, you'll notice this trend that everything inside of this component now, whether it's in our use effect or update quantity or our save button, we don't actually modify the data directly. We just modify, we just say what is being changed essentially. So first of all, when we load our items, you'll see that we have a reducer function which is, if you remember, we pass that in to our use reducer. And this use reducer understands the state of, the, the, of our system, and it takes in these four different action types, uh, and, they're, and they're in or, these are ORs. 
And so if our action type is the load items, which is the one we saw inside of use effect, then we the, we don't we're not going to change anything else in the state. We're only going to change the items. And so here we go, we iterate over each of the items in our payload. And now we're actually changing this to have the default item quantity, the diff of zero, and our dirty flag of false. To me, this feels like the way it should be because this makes this reducer partially reusable and it also extracts all the logic. Now this component has no logic other than that I call dispatch. So let's take a look at another one. So when we call update quantity, we, we take in the ID and the quantity. We did the same thing over here. We take in ID and quantity. But the difference is now inside of our reducer pattern, we call dispatch. We say we're updating the quantity and we pass in our ID and our quantity. We're just, we're just wrapping this payload of data into a structured object is all we're doing. And that lot, the code is actually basically identical. Inside of update quantity here, we're doing basically the same thing. We're not minimizing the code we're writing. We're just restructuring the code. And, and I th in my opinion, this is better because we can write a unit test on this logic and it, it doesn't have to, we don't have to load React. We can write code on this and we can test it directly against just plain old JavaScript and it's going to be a lot faster by doing that. And so, yeah, the code doesn't change. You're, you're just moving it outside of your, the logic of your system. And then finally we have our save button and this is very similar to what we had above or at least in our in our use state implementation. Um, we set our state to saving, we call a timeout and that timeout in this case is triggering a pair of data. And if we look at this one we dispatch a saving event and we dispatch a saved event. And in real life what I would expect to see is this set timeout would have a payload of items that it sends and it re-triggers the, the load items action. Uh, because when you save, you, I kind of feel like, uh, I mean, I guess I could take it in, in uh, either way, but part of me thinks that this data should reflect what the server said. So if I try to do something illegal here and it was caught by the server, uh, we should re-render that new change on the UI. But in this application, we don't do that. In this application, we just call saved. And when we have our save type, then we update the save state and we reset these items. And this is a performance thing that it's interesting to note is React hooks, this is efficient code. Like you might read this and you think, wow, like, well, first of all, like how is this used state? How is this actually working? Well, you just have to think about that well, it's actually pretty neat. Um, React keeps track of this component, right? You don't ever call a render. Com React is rendering it. So React is keeping track of when this function gets called, it's keeping track of what order this use state gets called. And so this gets indexed maybe with zero. This gets indexed with one. So the second time we call this, and it are, has already been called use state once, then it knows to just use index zero and index one for these, these items and these functions, these setters. And so that's what keeps this, if this makes this even possible. But React is also efficient because if we think about like this on change here, if we follow this, we have our on change definition here, we pass it into this table, this table passes it into an item, or I passed it, but this table takes the on change, it passes it into an item row, this item row takes the on change, and then finally, on change, this here, gets called inside the, the change event from React. So what's important to know is that React is doing some special things behind the scenes, and when you call, inside of this function here, when we call our setters, and we call these setters inside of the React events, the synthetic events that React provides, React is going to swallow all of these calls, it's going to aggregate that data together, and it's going to update the components um, state in one shot. 
which means even though we have this one event triggers two setters, we only re-render this component one time. So React tries to be very efficient. The reason why that breaks down is inside of this save changes, we call our set items in our set save state inside of a timeout. And so this is going to happen asynchronously from that um, click event on that button. And what's going to happen here is we're going to render this component once for the items and once for the save state. And it might not happen exactly that way. Uh, and I say that because there's a good chance React will have a little bit of a timeout so that even though these happen like one millisecond apart or whatever it ends up being, it's still going to render in one re-render or trigger a single re-render. Uh, but you have to think about like when you call these multiple setters and you call them outside of the the event being taking effect uh, or being, if you call them outside the synthetic event, you run the possibility of having multiple re-renders. And so the reason I say all of that is because if we take a look at this save button now, when we have our Ajax, we are calling save once, and this saved is taking care of triggering the new button and the items all in one go. And so we're only going to get a single re-render from this. And I think that's a performance benefit that while you may not ever see it on these 20 items for this one table, you will likely see benefits like that inside of a larger application. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with your friends. I'll see you next time.